How's it going guys? This is Wyatt with Marin Outdoors and today we're going to be talking about catching sturgeon in San Pablo Bay and then also the California Delta. Um, that's pretty much the two areas that I have the most experience in. I have more experience in San Pablo Bay. I've just been fishing it way longer uh, since a kid. And then recently because of my buddy Austin, if you guys didn't see the last video, he's been kind of figuring out the Delta a lot more um, and we've been fishing with him. Um, and kind of picking up tips on that too. So we're going to talk about those two areas, getting you guys into sturgeon. Um, pretty much with sturgeon, it's a waiting game. Um, you got to find the areas that you like. Um, we'll talk a little bit about where I like to set up. Um, and then from there, just trying to pretty much find what they are uh, feeding on that day. You know, sometimes they're hitting on ghost shrimp, sometimes they're hitting on grass shrimp eel, um, depending on the locations you're at. So we're going to cover all that stuff today and um, also like how to make leaders and stuff like that. Um, so first, we're going to talk about where to set up um, and stuff like that. I'm going to give you some reference points in the bay that are pretty uh, vague. I'm not going to give you any spots or anything, but some reference points in the bay to get you guys started um, and stuff like that. Um, for one of the San Pablo Bay, where a lot of people fish, is what's called the pump house. Um, it's just an old, uh, pretty much platform out in the bay that was used to pump water and stuff like that way back when. Um, that's a pretty popular spot to head out. It's pretty much at the end of the, the Petaluma River channel. Um, so it's pretty much at the entrance, I should say, the bay entrance of the Petaluma River channel. And uh, a lot of people fish that. And uh, it's pretty productive. I do fish that area a good amount of the time. Um, and with that being said, what I really like to do, if you guys have um, GPS or a fish finder or something like that, some way of you guys finding the contours of shelves, of uh, pretty much mud bank shelves, that's where you want to set up on. You want to pretty much put yourself, and say you're on a shelf like this. This is a downward shelf. You want to pretty much anchor yourself right in the middle of that shelf and fish there because what's happening is that mud's moving and stuff like that the currents coming in it's hitting those walls of mud and it's eroding away the mud exposing shells and shrimp and stuff that the sturgeon are actually feeding on and so a lot of those contours they're just pretty much going up and down those contours paralleling those and feeding on those contours so that's where you want to set up that's just my experience that's what I like to do um, again, you know, maybe you guys have had other experience where you like them in the flats or, you know, you like them in deeper holes, whatever. I don't know what you guys have experienced, but in my experience, if you're on that shelf, you're in pretty good luck. And also water height. We have, I mean, the last sturgeon I caught was literally in like three and a half feet of water. Um, these sturgeon will uh, go into super shallow water. So do not freak out on water height, especially with these tides and like the San Pablo Bay and stuff, it's a pretty low bay. You're gonna get down on some low tides where you'd be like in three feet of water, two, sometimes even two feet of water, depending on where you are. And you'll think, oh, I won't catch a fish in here, but sturgeon are bottom feeders and they do not mind the shallow water. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now, uh, in the Delta reference point, Montezuma Slough, um, Sassoon Bay, Grizzly Bay, those are all pretty good spots, um, and like I said, you're looking for the shelves um, and stuff like that. Now, on the Delta, you're fishing a little bit different, especially if you're fishing the sloughs and stuff. You're um, kind of, you're gonna find those shelves with those deeper holes, right? So a lot of Montezuma sloughs a lot deeper than San Pablo Bay. So you're looking for like 10 to 30 feet of water, depending on where you're sitting in that slough. So it's gonna be harder to anchor um, stuff like that. You know, so that's just other things to keep in mind. And it, like I said, you're looking for those contours and those shelves, the base, those big deep holes that they're feeding and they're finding those feeding opportunities. Now bait to use for, um, for sturgeon, uh, pretty much this goes for both locations, but the one thing I will uh, say right now, just right off the bat, with the bait, with the bait of moray eel, um, we use that a lot in the Delta. We do not use that a lot in San Pablo Bay. I haven't had much luck with it. Might pick up a striper or two um, with it, but that is really about it. Uh, eel, 
I exclusively use in the Delta pretty much. Also, salmon roe and salmon balls pretty much used exclusively in the Delta. I haven't fished them in San Pablo Bay. I mean, we've tried them, but I've never caught anything on them. Um, so those two baits, eel, salmon roe, that's kind of to um, Delta area, Montezuma Slough, Grizzly Bay, uh, Sassoon Bay, stuff of that nature. Now with uh, other baits, you're looking at ghost shrimp. Um, that's pretty much my go-to is ghost shrimp. Um, you know, I pump it myself when I have the chance, and if not, then I'll buy it. Or uh, luckily, one of our buddies usually pumps it. So we uh, we have a steady supply of ghost shrimp, which I like. Uh, other baits, grass shrimp um, can do even pile worms and blood worms, um, stuff like that. Anything that is really in the um, in the mud and stuff like that. Another common bait is clam. Um, I really haven't fished much with clam. I really want to try it. Native Salt Baits actually sent us a lot of clam for our youth group. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to actually do a video on us just using Native Salt Baits clam, uh, sturgeon fishing and stuff out in San Pablo Bay and see if that works. Some people have some pretty good luck on clam. But like I said, I've just had really good success with ghost shrimp, so I love to go with ghost shrimp. Um, now, once you have your bait all set up, you got everything like that, you got to uh, make your rig. And this is pretty much the rig I swear by. Um, this is more of a Delta rig, but I use it in San Pablo too. Um, and I, I really like it. And so uh, pretty much all that rig is, is you're gonna have a seven aught Gamagatsu octopus hook, barbless. Remember sturgeon fishing, it's gotta be all barbless. Um, way back when, when I was a kid, it wasn't like that. Um, you're actually able to use, uh, I mean, this is going way, way back. But when I was re real little, people would actually load up these giant like seven knot treble hooks and uh, like double double seven knots, and we would just load them up with grass shrimp and just chuck them out in San Pablo Bay. And I mean, you never lost a sturgeon on that one. So, but we we're back to uh, like I said, barbless seven knot uh, octopus hook. You also have uh, some beads to protect your knots. And then I usually do three eighths to a half ounce of weight of a uh, egg sinker, and then your um, and then your uh, snap swivel for your, or your swivel. Uh, I'm pretty much gonna make a leader for you guys right here, so yeah, you guys know how how it's made. Pretty simple, um, and yeah. So like I said, three eighths worth of weight, two beads. And this is 60 pound mono. Use 60 to 90 pound mono. Um, San Pablo Bay, a lot of people fish the wire leaders. Uh, you can totally do that. But I just like to use the mono just the way I am. So, and you know, give yourself some uh, extra line to work with here. So we're going to take our Gamagatsu hook first, and this is the exact same rig that I caught the last sturgeon on in the video uh, that I will probably show clips of in here. I'm just going to do your knot, whatever knot you do. And, you know, I like to have about shoulders width on my leader here. You know, we got that weight on there to keep this bait down on the bottom when the tide's really ripping and, and the current's really ripping because you need to keep that bait on the bottom and you want to Sturgeon tides are really big swinging tides, and so when you're going after those types of tides, you know there's a lot of water movement, there's a lot of ebb, and so that'll that'll when if you don't have that weight on there, that'll keep, that'll float your your bait off of the off of the ground because of the current. Now with the weight, the current's going to take it, and it's just going to sit it down in there, 
and it's just going to keep it in the mud, keep it down low where that sturge is going to find it. So after the weight and bead are on after the hook, you just take your swivel, tie your swivel, and you're done. Now you can uh, size up your hooks if you want um, to, you know, whatever you want, but I've just had good luck with 7 aughts, so I like to keep it around that size. Um, and that's pretty much how you make a leader. That's pretty much a Casey Customs leader. If you guys don't feel like making them, buy a Casey Custom leader. They're best around. You use big game mono, um, stuff like that, so they are perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, but yeah, that is the uh, rig. That is the bait, um, location, where to find them, all that stuff. Um, that is pretty much basic. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit of the tides here before I go away. Like I said, sturgeon tides are big tides. You want, if you can, you want to see negative tides going. I mean, you want like four to six feet of water moving um, throughout the day at least. Um, you want a good amount of water, good ebb. Stuff like that. Um, I we tend to catch sturgeon at the turning of tides, at the start of tides, you know, end of tides, stuff like that. And there's a very small window where they're gonna start um, start biting. Um, my buddies kind of put it in a good way. They kind of travel around like cows, right? So they do kind of group together and stuff, and they're just grazing the flats, and they're just going around, going around. So when that tide gets right, and that's and that feeding starts. They're just cruising, cruising, and you're just waiting for them to suck up your hook. Uh, one thing before I forget is uh, after your leader is all done and stuff, you're going to put on your main line a slider and then attach your main line to your leader. And then from there, you're going to have like an 8 ounce, 10 ounce, or even a 12 ounce, depending on how the tide is. You just need that weight to sink in there and stay there. If uh, if that weight is coming up and moving and stuff, you're going to have a hard time catching a sturgeon. you got to keep everything on the bottom. Um, like I said, that's the reason for this weight. And then, uh, like I said, slider in this. And just sink it right down in there and keep it there. Um, but anyways, sturgeon fishing, that's pretty much it. When you, Once this is down on the bottom and you got it sitting, it's pretty much a waiting game from there. You're just waiting for those cows to come in through feeding and uh, bite your stuff and then hook into them. So... I hope this uh, video helps. Comment, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.